All right, I'm going to start. Uh, have it recorded so other people can watch the recording if they need to. So in, in tonight, what I'm going to go over in this last session is how we can pivot data. And I'll go over some of the lecture notes that cover the concept of pivoting. And then we'll we'll go over a statement or two that demonstrate how you can pivot data. And then finally, I'm going to show you how through, through some scripting techniques, you could actually take what we um, use to pivot data and make it dynamic. Cause you're gonna see where there's a, a place in the pivoting where you kind of need to know about your data to write the statement. And we're going to set it up where you don't need to know as much about your information. So I guess before we get much further along, let's talk about what pivoting means. So pivoting is essentially allows us to um, cross tabulate the information. So um, the way I kind of like to think of it, is it's gonna allow us to make uh, rows and columns of our data. And essentially some of the information that would be laying in rows, some of the values will actually become column names in our um, result. And then we can summarize information according to the rows and columns. So if you've ever used Excel and you've used a pivot table, this is exactly what we're gonna do in, in SQL is create a pivot table. So from a diagram perspective, what this really means is, is that we're going to be taking information from detail rows like this record set on the left. And you can see I have style like U and W and so on, and locations. And I'm going to take that information and use the location for um, each unique location as a, a row, and then each unique style as a column. So you can see where the U's become a column, the W's are a column, and then the intersections are actually going to be the summation of some value. So in this case, I chose total inventory. And what we see here on the Deber and Polish line, when we get the column U, the total here, the 268896 represents the total inventory for all Deber and Polish that are of type U. So if we went through and, and wrote a group by statement, you know, we could kind of see it vertically where it would just, literally say well, location name deber polish style u and then the total and then it might say deber deber and polish and then style w and then the total and so on and so we'd have those totals and then we can take the unique styles there and then essentially turn them on them on its side and then take the total values and kind of fill in those intersections so that's kind of like what's happening So there's a couple of parts to a pivot statement because you're going to see where as you work with it, it's definitely different than what we've seen like with um, a select statement. So if you kind of start to think of the pivot statement in terms of the parts that I'm laying out here, it'll, it'll help you kind of put it together. So the parts that you want to really think about when you're putting a pivot statement together are the, the columns, okay, the pivot columns the row grouping elements, and then the aggregation at the intersection of the row and columns. So the row grouping element, again, would be like we were looking in our detail line, the DeBurn polish, where you can see it coming through as um, each unique um, entry becomes its own row, okay? The pivot columns are going to be the, um, what, what's it, the style. So that's the styles, the pivot columns. And each unique style now becomes its own column. And then the last part of the, the part is the aggregate, which is the sum where we're taking the inventory and summing it. And then that gets laid in as, as value. So you can see here, I kind of have like a little, um, 
pull out and it ha shows those rows for the bird polish and style you on this these rows would add up to be the 268896. So if you were to look at a pivot statement in SQL, it looks slightly different, right? So um, one thing that you'll notice here, and I'm going to kind of just blow this up so we can still kind of look at the color codes, is okay. There's there's a couple of things. One, I'm using a um, common table expression to just help simplify the query. This is kind of part, part of my style, but inside this common table expression, you'll see the row grouping element, which is in blue. And then one thing that's interesting is the, the pivot columns. Notice how I literally have to say what those pivot columns are. So here I had to like know in advance that the, that the values could for the style could be M, W, and U. So you can see where I'm actually typed out M, W, and U. So I had to do probably a query on the side to figure that out, right? And um, and then the sum. So the idea here then is, is I'm doing a select on location name. Here's the columns again, M, W, U. I have one called not used from my um, common table expression, whose job is only really just to help kind of consolidate the information and make it more simple. This didn't have to be a common table expression. It could have just been part of the main query, but I wanted to keep things separate. And then I'm pivoting on the column. So that those are where the three elements come into play. And really the one thing I think that's kind of weird if, about it, at least for me, when, I, when I'd look at this, is the fact that what I would consider my data, right? Like style U, it's data in my mind. Um, when it comes to the pivot statement, it becomes actually part of the statement. And if you look carefully here, you know, this isn't data. This is this is actually like a keywords, right? Or tokens. So it's expecting that to be a column name in the table. And to me, that was slightly a bit strange that the this pivot statement is actually making that happen. And also the fact that I kind of have to know these things a priori. Like I, I, I literally probably, you know, when I wrote this, I, I'm pretty certain what I did is I did a select distinct on style on this table to see what the um, valid values were and then use those as my column names or like a subset of them and then use not use for others. So that to me, that's kind of the, the odd thing about the pivot table. So let's go and, and play with one. And then I think once we do that, you'll see how um, it kind of comes together. And then what I'm gonna show you is how we can um, kind of get rid of some of this hard coding as I call it, the M, W, and U and replace that with some scripting. So before we go too far into this, whoops, I got to change my connection. Uh, all right, let's just run the um, query that has the inner join and just to give us our data. Right, so this isn't even a pivot. This is just detailed data. We'll see how many rows come back. It shouldn't be too too huge. So you can see here where you know we're getting back um, locations and styles and inventory. And if I start scrolling through, you can see where in some of the location names, you know, there's style U and W and not used. Um, and so on. Um, and again, if I took style here and did a select distinct on it, whoops.
an alias uh, and maybe it's thinking it's something else or I spelled it. Oh, I think I might have spelled it wrong. Who knows? Oh, 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 oh. I know what I, I got to do the inner join. That's what I get for cutting and pasting. All right. I, I forgot that this thing was, um, or maybe it wasn't. Oh, inventory to product. All right. So the product has the style on it and I'm looking at the inventory. So that's the issue. So I got inventory and then I'm going out to the product to see what its style is. All right. So let's just see what those distinct styles are and see here we can see, let's make this a little bigger. There we go. You can see where the style is M, U and M and no. So no, those where um, if you looked up here, I I had it come across as not used. So this is what I probably did when I first wrote the pivot statement. I was like, hmm, I wonder what the real styles are, found out what they were, then I hard code them into the, the query. All right. So if we want to write this as a pivot, what I would do is first, um, do it as, as I did here is kind of get the data cleaned up. And then as you can see, instead of having a style come across as null, I, I, I made it not, not used. And one reason I did that is, is that it's, it's hard to use null as a column name. So you gotta have a value for it. So by coalescing it and using not use, I can now use that as part of my, uh, a column, my pivot, okay? so. The next thing I'm going to do is just make this a common table expression, and, and that's pretty straightforward. So I can just say with and then CTE, and I guess I'm going to use what I have in my example so I don't get tripped up. So I called this what? Inventory. And I can just say as, and then And this thing's a little too big for me. I'm gonna make it a little smaller. And then I'm gonna indent this just because. And now what I should be able to do is just say, just to show you that the common, the common table expression's working. All right, so I got, I, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a pivot table or a pivot expression off this information, off this table right here. Okay. So to do that, what I need to do is select a couple of things. So let's go back to this example here and let's go back to the parts. All right. So there's row groupings, columns, and the sum. So really the first thing that you're you're going to want to deal with is what what is it that I'm grouping on, the row grouping, right? And in our case, that's the location name. So that's the first thing you want to select. So I'm going to say select location name, okay? And then the next piece that you're going to want to select are the columns. So if you notice the way this thing's kind of um, laid out is it's select the row grouping, then the column, then the column. So it's row grouping and then pivot columns. So that's how, what we're going to do in our select statement. So here I can do, um, I guess it was M W not used did i forget one i'm gonna peek um w u and not used right all right m w u and not used all right and then i can say from and then let's see what we got going on here I got my inventory. All right, so now if I was to run this, it's gonna crash. It's gonna be like, what are you talking about? I don't know what these, these columns are. And that's because I gotta write the pivot part. So now I can say pivot 
and this is kind of the oddball part, and I don't do this often, so I have to kind of look it up. So I'm going to say pivot, and then it's, it's an expression. So I'm going to say sum. So now here's that other piece. What am I going to sum on? I'm going to sum on this total inventory, right? Which is, luckily, I, I don't have to worry about the expression because that's kind of wrapped in my common table expression. So I, I can just use total inventory here. Okay. Whoops, I gotta do the sum part though. So I'm gonna sum on total inventory and then four. And then now it wants to know what's the column that I'm I'm pivoting on, right? So if I come back here again, it wants to know really where's MWU coming from? Well, they're, they're coming from style, right? If I come back to this diagram here, it wants to know that they're coming from style. So it's for style right here in, and then it's like an in clause, believe it or not, but it doesn't, it's not in like this. So this is where it gets strange again. Cause I would think it'd be like, oh, it's like in like my values W I'm kind of playing just to show you what I think it, if I was like doing this from the beginning new, I would, think like, oh, it's style in and it wants to know the values. This is where I always would get tripped up, but that's not what it wants. It wants to know um, the actual column names. It's really strange, right? So it, this is what we're, I think, used to using all the time, like when we're writing our where clause statements or in subqueries, but this isn't the form. It, what it literally wants is the column name. So like this, and then it wants the other column that we're gonna use, which is not used, okay. So if this seems kind of strange to you, you can also put these in brackets, just maybe that mentally helps you understand that those are columns, right? Um, and then, did I miss something? And then I think I got to do as P, all right. So it wants this alias, but we're not gonna use it. It's kind of strange, but we, you have to give it an alias. And then now I can do um, normal things like an order by. So I could say like order, order by location name. Alrighty, so let's see if this works. There it goes. So we have our, our um, locations here, which is this location. Um, I have the columns. I, again, I, I don't necessarily need to have these brackets around them. You would normally use brackets in this situation where your column name has a, a space in it, right? You know, it's multiple words, it's still run it, still works you could do things like i could say select like upper so i i basically just said take the location name and make it uppercase but notice when i did that it no longer has a column right so i could say maybe call this u location maybe so now it has a column named you location so you can kind of play around with it it's not like it's locked in we'll take it back to what it was so the other question a lot of guys or people have is all right when i run this uh oh i broke it when i run this is what happens if i um don't want to include all the columns can i do that and you can so like i could take out like w and just do m and u and it'll run perfectly fine now if i bring in another column like let's say b and run it of course it's a column invalid column name b but one thing i've never tried is what happens if i add b down here can i kind of fake it out 
So let's try this. So that works. So we, we just kind of said, oh, by the way, you know, you might find the value B in your data. And if you, and if you do, you know, use it in the pivot table. Um, just ha so happens our data does not have a style for B, right? So instead we, we um, have nulls. And I guess to hammer this home that, you know, there's nothing wrong with B. I could have said, instead of not use, I could have said B right here, right? So whenever, actually let's do this. Um, we'll keep that the same. And then what I'm going to do is just to show you a different way is say um, case when um, P dot, style is null then b and oh i can't do that um else i can't make two of them never mind i was going to i was going to use two expressions to do it but i can't because i can only have a pivot on one style but what I can do is just to kind of show you that there's nothing special about what I put here is I can put B here and then run it. And now what's gonna happen is this, all the nulls will jump to B. And so this not used will be null and we should see values in the B column now. So that's what happened there, right? So you, there's nothing magic about the column names other than it's going to use that to match the value from the detail and then line it up in the pivot. So I'm going to put this back the way it was. Actually, I'll just undo it. There we go. And then this as well. Um, is there anything else that I can think of that you could do with this? Now, you may want to um, deal with the nulls here. Yeah, so I'm trying ask. to think of a tricky nulls. way to deal with that. And the one way would be is to right here you could say something like coalesce the that the um expression right and if it's if any of it if any of the expression goes the null then just make it zero and then whoops There we go. And that didn't work. I would have swore that would have worked. So I thought what, oh, I know what's happening. It's not my that my value here was null and it was trying to add it up. It's if there literally is no value. There's no combination for the burn polish and style M. So I think I think in this case it's brute force. You'd have to write a case statement on the outside that literally is um, like right here. Right where you would say like select M and I could say coalesce and I can make this zero. Right. We'll just try it on M. And the idea here now is is if, if this value is for column M is um, null, let's make it zero. And since this is an expression, we got to give it a name. So we're just going to call it M again. All right. Can't do that either. I'll have to look that one up because I know there's a way to, to do that. I just can't find it right now. All right. Anyways, what I wanted to show you though is how you can take this and make it dynamic. 
because there's really, if you think about it, there's just a couple places where we need to um, replace our, um, the columns that we kind of like found through doing the select distinct with a, a variable or an expression. And then we need to come up with a way to execute it. And, and right here's what, I, what I've highlighted is, is really kind of the only area that's kind of magic, right? That we'd have to um, worry about. And maybe the this coalesce style, if we keep it as not used, we're, we're good. So let me show you what you can do to make this happen. And I had to play with this for a bit to make this work. So I'm going to just copy and paste in a, another statement and show you it. It's been a while since I've, whoops, that is totally the wrong statement. That's SAP stuff. Um, Okay, so we've already talked about this statement where I can say select distinct style. And it'll give me back a list of styles. One thing that's really super cool with SQL is this, there's this command called um, string ag. And what string ag will do is essentially take a table expression, which is essentially what's coming back from this, and take each row and then essentially append them together. And so what I, what I have here essentially is something that says, take the, um, take the value in the style column for every row and then tack it together and put a comma in between them, okay? And then um, we're gonna add not used to the end. So let me maybe do this in a slightly different way, just to kind of show you how string egg works. without all the other garbage around it. Okay, so what I'm gonna, what should happen here is, is again, this is gonna bring back a table of styles. And then this string egg, as you can say, it, it returns um, a vercare. So when I run it, it's gonna, it should return a string that is M comma U comma W. And that's what happens. So that uh, what's cool about that is that it, um, I av avoids have me having to like create a cursor just to like iterate through the rows, which is pretty cool. And I'm gonna use this to build our, our um, field list for our pivot. So if you think about this as being like that, a building block, really um, there's a couple of concepts I'm, I'm introducing on top of this select statement. So the first one is, is let's, let's do that same thing, the string egg, we're gonna select, select string egg from this table. But now instead of, it being a um, just output as a result. Let's stick it into a count. Let's stick it into a variable. Okay, and then all. And by the way, we're going to um, also tack on not used to it. And that's no different than if I was to uh, do a sum of something and then add to it. With and that's perfectly legal. So the one thing I need to do now is is declare this. So if you're seen some scripting before you can declare variables pretty simply by just saying like declare the variable and I can just say like as ver care and then I'll just make this like um, 1024 so make it a kilobyte long and then at the end here what I'll do is 
I could do a select at pivot column, but just to show you a different way, I, I'm going to do um, print at pivot column. And then I'll just do uh, So if I got this right, all right. So it ran, I declared a variable. We, we took that string egg that we were talking about, ran it, pumped it into this variable. And then rather than throw it out as a message, I, I just said, or as a result, I said, well, let's just send it to the messages tab. And here you can see where it's pivot column and here's the value that it created. So that that was sitting inside of this um, variable while it was the script was running. So this this becomes very um, useful because I'm actually now going to um, take that and put it on the end there because that way we can remember what what this thing's producing. And I'm going to go back to, I'm going to keep that one. We'll go here. All right. So what I'm now going to do is bring in this. All right. And that's going to go here. So before we go much for, so the idea is going to be is we're going to take this pivot column variable and we're going to um, replace this MWU not used with this pivot column variable and this area and this area. All right. So you, you're, you're probably like, like, how am I going to, how are you going to do that? Because this is actually a statement, right? It's not data. So how, how do I do that? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that a string, like a Vericare and then we can manipulate it. But before I go that far, I want to show you another concept, okay? And that's how can I execute SQL that's in a string? And what I mean by that is, is let's declare a variable. And I'm going to call it SQL. It could be called anything. All right, and then I'm going to And then I'm going to set that equal to let's do um, select um, I'm just going to run this right now. And as you can see, what this did is I declared a variable. I basically stuck a value in a variable. That's nothing remarkable. And then I just said, show me what's in that value. And this is what it came back with flux star from um, person dot person. So now what I can do, though, is try to execute that. So I can say to execute it, I can do execute and then at sql okay and that's it in its simplest form and let's run this and when I, if I if i got everything right i'll have two results i'm gonna have one that's this sql and there'll be a second result that's the um result of basically a listing of all the people and there we go Right, so this value I was able to execute, and this is this is called dynamic SQL. What I want I wanted to show this to you, and I guess just to make it more clear, is let's go like this, right? So now when I run it, I was able to um, do that within a um, write my SQL on the string and then execute it. And I wanted to show this separate because we're going to now use this concept in combination with the concept of the um, pivot columns to create our pivot statement. 
So let's just take this piece here because we're going to need that. Bring it here. All right. And then just to kind of clean things up, I'm going to put my SQL at the top. And then this execute statement, put at the bottom. All right. And then I'll show you something kind of cool with the formatting here. Um, I'm going to get rid of this piece and notice how everything went red. Well, it went red because it went, it thinks it's a, I, it thinks this is all string. So if I come down here and then put another single quote, you can see now where, and I'm going to actually out that this a bit or indent it. You can see now where it looks like a statement, but it's really um, a string. Now there is a problem here because there's a single quote, right? And, and so it thinks our string ends right, right here. Like this is just the piece. And then there's like a statement. So what I need to do is I need to tell it, hey, this, this is actually data, not part of the delimiter. And to do that, I can escape it. And you just you basically essentially do double. See now how, see now how this is blue, but everything else below it this is now now red i mean and everything below it's blue so i gotta escape the the termination delimiter all right so now now i have um my sql so in theory at this point i'm going to just comment this piece out because we're not going to run that this statement that we've been working with all along is now embedded in a string and i should be able to just run this as is so let's see what happens when I do that, you can see now it comes back and runs. All right, well, I didn't really get us much further along except maybe to complicate things. So we need we need to get some value out of this if we're gonna go through all this to, to do um, all the scripting. So the, the value is, is that I don't wanna know what these values are. So let's go in here now and take this pivot column and let's replace these pivot columns that we see with our pivot column. So right here, I know that that can be our pivot column. So I'm gonna put a delimiter there, put a plus sign, put our variable, get rid of these columns that I don't need, and then put another plus sign, and then my delimiter, right? So now you can see select location, and then it's going to be pivot columns, right? And then I'm going to do the same thing here. So this right here is pretty much the same thing. So let's just take our pivot column here. Um, I would have just cut and paste all of this and just laid it in, but I'm going to show you how, how to do it piece at a time. So I'm going to terminate that. And then I'm gonna do plus. Like so. And now I have my statement. And what we'll do, for debugging purposes, we'll print that out so we can see what it looks like and then we'll execute it. If I go to mess, let's say that it didn't look the, quite the way I wanted, what I could do now is go to messages and there's the SQL with it, everything printed out. So there any questions on that? So this is this actually, though I'm using it for pivot tables, is a a really 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 powerful thing. Um, I think I've shown it in the past, but I I use this quite a bit when I'm doing work to take something that is a pattern that needs to be repeated, and instead of like hard coding in all the um, the pieces, I'll I'll just write a um, 
dynamic SQL to, to do the same thing. I, I had a the, I had a thing where I had to do fourteen joins, and they literally were um, almost the same. Uh, the only difference was is the one column was so that it was like path one joining to a part number, path two to a part number, path three to a part number. And it was like 14 of these like left outer joins. And I was like, there's no way I'm going to like write this and do like 14 of them. And then someday somebody's going to go, you know, this thing goes more than 14, it goes 15. So what I wrote is a um, routine that would generate all the, the joins. And then much like I did with pivot comms here, I was able to generate my joins and then stick them into the statement. And then I just run the statement. And then what I'll do is instead of printing out the SQL, I have a, a little log table set up on my database. And then I can, I wrote a little um, quick routine called write log. And then I'll write using my little write log routine. I'll write my SQL out to that log before I execute it. And that way, if it crashes, I have that generated X SQL in the log I can go look at to see, you know, what did I mess up? Because, you know, common mistakes are, you know, forgetting a delimiter or a comma or whatever, right? Like, it's pretty easy to forget. You add, you get excited, you add this stuff in and it looks great. And then you go to run it. And um, you can get errors real quick on it. So like, like what's interesting here is, is I, it's funny, I was like expecting an error and it didn't bring back an error, um, which surprised me, but it's not right. So what, what, I, what I did is I, I took away the comma on the after location name. But if you look, what's kind of weird about this is I, I thought I was gonna like yell and say, um, you know, no comma, something, you know, something along the lines like that. But it just basically shifted over the column name. So M U. It's just kind of strange how that worked. So I put the comma back and then run it. See now the locations here. So somehow it kind of adjusted itself, but it adjusted itself in a wrong way. So it's things like that that might be useful to log when you're doing dynamic SQL so you can see your SQL. So if, if you're running like big batch jobs, log to a file so you can look at it like a table. Otherwise, maybe print it to messages so you can look, you know, read it, see what's going on. So that's um, pretty much all I wanted to talk about tonight was this concept and walk you through the, the dynamic piece. So um, again, is there is there any questions on on this specific part with pivot tables? Yeah, um, a simple one, I think. Uh, Chris, uh, you you you've set the variables in there um, by by printing, you know, typing them in. I don't know if the SQL accept like a prompt, like can you actually set it up so it it asks you to type in, you know, whatever missing. Um, like a parameter that you need and then then it would execute almost like a report not, so, that, I, not that i would have even know a use for that it's just a question i was just thought that normally you don't, you don't do that or you do that is possible oh um are you asking like could you run this and then it would prompt you for the input and then fill that yeah. in and yeah you would it. set a variable there and i was wondering can you act, is there is there a command that actually prompts you to, you, you execute and it says you know fill fill in the number one two or three or something yeah you yeah just type yeah it in and then it runs yeah and I don't know if that's not where we want to go with this class but I I um on you know for SQL proper I haven't seen it like that but maybe on some of the other interactive tools we could do that I know there's um there's in some languages, you can set up positional parameters, but that's a different thing. They don't prompt you for the, the values so that you can have the user supply them. Okay, thanks. Yeah, that, that's, you know, one thing to be honest, that's 
uh, uh, that's missing from like a class like this is is sometimes that user interaction you know like how do i take what you've done with a query or put together here and and hook it into the application right that's that's one piece that's it's like another that's a whole different topic <laughs> to be honest so okay thank you yeah you're welcome does anybody have any questions on any other areas yes chris all right um so for that variable let's assume we have 12 months in a year and you want to print out um let's say for example we are in the month of april but if we have info or data for the month of may whether we could add additional uh column to be printed out just as the year goes on um to be printed out on your database say for example you have january february march and you print a report out and you have those four months uh january february march sorry three months and then the next month which is april you have the information you want to print that out could you add uh, a plus one or minus one into those variable columns so that each additional month, you know, you'd be able to print out the data? Yeah. Um, so, what you know, there's two things, uh, and I'm going to go back to this simple example just to kind of use the style, pretend like the styles were months, right? You know, the, the first thing is, is um, pretend like um, months X, Y, and Z haven't happened yet, right? So you're, 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 there's nothing stopping you from, if you so chose to do so, to have your report set up like so, where it would bring in maybe all 12 months, right? And then it just shows empties. So that the, it doesn't crash. That's just wanted to show you that. So you could go that route. Now, what I think what you're what you're saying is is like, hey, you know what I want to be able to do is all right. So when it's the month of M, I'm gonna save this so I don't forget it. And then I'm gonna go to the other one and kind of play with it. So hang, um, bear with me with this. But this is a tangible example I can use. It's like when it's the month of M. What you're saying is, is just show me M. If I get out of my way, let's see. If I understand you right. So you want it to be like this. And then you're like, oh, okay. And now time marches on. Now let's bring in a column for, for W. Is that kind of what you're, what you're thinking? And then correct um, yes yeah so what so what i would do in this case is i would script this out and um okay so in the easiest what the easiest case is that your your fiscal what your year starts in january <laughs> i guess the easiest so what what i would do is um essentially I would create a month number, okay? And then I would I would just create a little loop that instead of using the string egg to like get the data, I would synthetically build the month, right? So what I would be doing up here is, you know, something like um, declare the month as an integer. And then I would do, um, do like I think do let's so do while at m. Oh, I want to make this an integer equal to one. While well, is less than um, or, or equal to month um, get date. So get date is today's date, right? So today would be April fourteenth, two thousand twenty-one. Month of get date is going to come back with a four. So I'm making a while loop that is going to run until 
the value for, right? And then I would say uh, set at m equals at m plus one. Alrighty, so now I just got this simple little loop that's gonna crank through and it's gonna go one, two, three, four, right? And then what I would do is declare a month column at month column um, as their care 1024. And then in here, I would say something like um, at month column, oh, um, I'll start out simple. Oops. Equals, um, I'm just going to give it the name of the, I'm just going to give it the number. Okay. Uh, actually, what you could do, I guess, if you wanted to get super fancy, is you, you could give it the um, the name. You, you This needs to be something that's matching your data. So in your data, you're either going to have the month number or something like that, right? So it needs to match the data, right? Much like our style needed to match the column. All right. So it could be the month name. It could be whatever. But I'm just going to assume that in your data, that you, somehow you can have a column for the month, much like we're doing here. So, um, and then, so I'm gonna do basically this plus cast um, at M as fair care one. And then there's probably a better way to do this with format, but I'm just kind of swinging it. And then what I would do is, I got to initialize this too, otherwise nulls will always happen. And then there's this thing it's hard to get around is, is if at month, a oh, length, I got to get a comma in there. So what I want to say is if the length of my month column is greater than zero, um, then uh, set at month column. Do I got more than one of these spellings? Nope. I love how you can highlight, by the way, and it'll show you all your occurrences. Um, equal at. All right, and we'll put a little space in it. So, and then what I would do is use this instead of my pivot column, right? So I would put, you no. Know, you got your report set up however, and then this would be in there instead. Does that make sense? It does. So I don't, the only thing is, I don't know if this works. So let's try it because I like flew through this like without debugging it. So, I mean, the obviously the SQL is not going to work at all, but let's, let's make sure my, uh, my month column actually comes out right. And if it doesn't, we'll, um, we'll make it, we can fix it, I think. Um, I don't need this either. Oh yeah. Okay, that worked. So that would, and then um, if you think about, um, you know, down the road, if people were 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 wondering, okay, what's going to happen next, you know. You could think of, I think I can just do 2021 dash 05 dash 01. So in May, uh, it goes to five, right? And then in August, 
it makes eight columns. So as as the um, period moves along, this thing moves along with it. And so, and maybe you have something where I'm, I know I'm in month, I'm in one month, but really um, I haven't closed it out yet. So you could, you could subtract, right? Yeah. Because your books aren't done yet. So really you want to report through March. So you could play around with that too, because you could say month minus one. All right. Right. So that should go to seven. So you can play around and do things like that. So um, this might be something people might like. So let me paste this in. So I, I can write a really hard program like that, but I don't know how to. Um... Oh, I got to find, ch oh, there's chat. Gosh, I use too many. Um... There, if you guys want that little bit of code, there it is. Okay. I appreciate that, Chris. Yeah, no problem. Um, anything else? No, that was good. Thank you. All right. So, um, this is for you guys and whoever listens to the recording. So tomorrow I, I'd start the office hours part and what I would, this would have been a really good example for like the office hours, right? Where somebody's, especially like with the stored procedure class I have where, they're like, hey, I'm doing X, Y, Z, and I'm trying to figure out how to like concatenate stuff together. Can you show me how? And this is where I would literally just like show them how to on the fly do something. So um, you guys are, you know, it's part of what you've, you know, got with the Furious SQL. And maybe, I don't know if, if you guys also got the sort procedure class or not. I don't know who all bought what, but you, you're more than welcome to jump in anytime you got a question. You know, it's, I always appreciate um, answering questions. I like doing it. So um, just, you won't be a bother and just come in and, um, or if you want to chat about something, that's fine. It'll be every Thursday and I'll just, I'll just have the call open. I'll be doing other stuff if no one shows up. So even if you're late, if you want to jump in at, you know, 730, I'll be there. So so Chris, that will be my first uh, um, stop procedure class because I signed up for that too, even though I signed up for Fearless SQL. Yeah, so yeah, both. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So um, yeah. So with with I, I have a feeling I'll, I might get some more people in there with the questions because I think that's a little more wide open. So what you know, I don't what I don't know what unit have you started any of the units yet? And store procedures. I, I for fearless SQL, I started uh, um, those um, uh, unions intersect, but okay. I'm I'm I've been working with Oracle, so SQL Server is just new. I'm just trying to make sure I be able to um, match some of the differences with Oracle. <laughs> yeah, you know you know where you're gonna. Um, where you're going to see differences down the road. Um, well, obviously with store procedures, because that's pretty different. But I think one thing that's going to um, really frustrate you in the beginning are, are the date functions. I read about that. 